Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Greater Manchester Stories. This episode's guest is Raja Maya, and he's a little bit like me. He's had enough. He's had enough of the politics. He's had enough of the corruption. He's had enough of the incompetence, and he's putting his hat in the ring, and he's standing to be an MP next year. So without further ado, welcome, Raja, to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Nick. So let's get into it. So where are you standing? Why are you standing? What are the problems? What are the issues? I am standing in my hometown of Oldham. There are two constituencies. The one I'm standing in is, is Oldham, West, Chadderton and Royton. The current MP is the recently departed Shadow Minister, Jim McMahon. He has 25,000 votes at the last general election and the combination of all the other party votes did not even come close to his majority. So I know the scale of what we are up against, but I am confident that we can defeat him at the ballot box. And why does he need defeating? He needs defeating for a number of reasons. The first and most important reason, and why I got into this, Nick, in the first place, is Jim McMahon is involved. Whilst he was council leader, he was formerly Oldham council leader. And when we campaigned to expose this and we campaigned for a public inquiry, he actively attacked myself and many members of our my town and demonised us as racist and far-right activists and did whatever he could possible to try and stop us exposing what we did, which was really essentially Nick, fighting for our children to have justice. Nothing more than that. We did not enter. I did not enter this space uh, with the motivation of politics. I entered this space with the motivation that this is my town and these are my children and I have a responsibility to protect them. So would it be fair for me to say that Jim McMahon Oh no no no! Let, let's let's be let's be clear. Never have I made that allegation. No no no! I I, I I'm not saying it, but but from my point of view, we're not saying that. What we're saying is his inaction and pushing back for public inquiry has done so much more damage and has enabled people to get away with this horrendous crime. Yes, and inaction is uh, with the greatest of respect, Nick. Inaction is the wrong term. His actions, because. As Andy Burnham's assurance review confirmed, and they tried to hide it in the small print, but it confirmed the politicians that ran our town knew, knew what was going on and actively worked to keep the news hidden from members of the public. Now, I am a parent, Nick. I have an eight-year-old daughter. And as a parent of an eight-year-old daughter, I believe that the leaders of my town, of which Jim McMahon was at the time leader of the council, had a duty to tell all of us, and he did not. There's many times where politics is complicated and there's a nuance and you're trying to do something good, but you know it's going to lead to other things getting worse. And being a politician is not easy, but there's times where it is easy. There's times where you know if this is damaging children, if this is allowing the rape of children in my town, it doesn't matter about anything else. That I mean, like I say, that's a clear cut of right versus wrong. There is no nuance there. Nick, they celebrated, and when I say they, I mean Jim McMahon and his team of council officers. So let's talk about why you think he did this. Do you think it was back payments? Do you think it was corruption? Do you think he was blackmailed? Or do you think it was purely he wanted to keep the status quo because that's how he gets elected? The last reason, Nick, that he wanted to keep the status quo, and I will try and articulate this in the way I see this, and I have learned to see this. And it's not where I started off, Nick. I've been on a journey on this as well. White working class girls mattered the least. Votes from a certain demographic, people who look like me, mattered more. And he believed, it is my position, he and those he represented and worked alongside believed that speaking out against this would turn people like me against him. 
That is not the case, Nick. I am very, very clear. I have been clear from the outset that people in my community are appalled by this as much as in any other community. And this has been racialized. This issue has been racialized because of the inactions of those we trusted to do the right thing. I don't know any person from any race, from any religion, from any community who will condone the rape and abuse of children. I don't know any. No, neither do I. But what I do know is that this was done, and it's also in the report and the email trail that I exposed now four years ago or so, where the council were very, very clear. They had a desire, in their opinion, to maintain community relations. I do not think this maintained community relations. I think, believe their actions destroyed community relations. Furthermore, within the report, it is very clear that they were concerned they kept this hidden. They were concerned because of the impact or the potential uh, rise in support for the British National Party who were campaigning all them at the time. I do not care, Nick. I am a Democrat. If the British National Party would gain votes for it, let them gain votes for it. I would have fought the British National Party and said, this is not a race issue. This is a child protection issue. And I, as a brown person, as a Muslim, have a duty to speak out. McMahon and his associates lacked the courage and the moral conviction to do what was right. And ever since then, ever since then, they have been covering this up and covering this up because they know once the truth comes out, they are in trouble, Nick. This goes back to what I talk about all the time, short termism. They made decisions for the short term to get benefits out of the short term, which is vote and be elected. They made decisions in their interest, Nick. Yeah, in their interest, not in the interests of our communities and definitely not in the interests of our children. Oh, absolutely. Interests for them to be voted in again, not caring the long-term implications when all this comes out, because they must know everything comes out eventually. Well, he, you know, he claims he's resigned for health reasons. He resigned on the day, you know, on the day of the reshuffle. I don't believe he resigned for health reasons at all, Nick. And what's come out last week in Rotherham is that the Labour Party are having to intervene and deselect candidates because Keir Starmer knows that come a general election, this issue will damage them, particularly in the white working class areas where they need to take back the red wall votes. Yeah, no, no one can vote for a party or for a politician who condones and was involved in child abuse, no matter how little they were involved. Again, I go back to what I said before, it's, it's right versus wrong. You're on one side or the other. There is no middle ground on this. Nick, he knew, that, you know, and it took me best part of five years, Nick, of tr using every bit of skill experience I have, trawling through documents, interviewing uh, survivors, teachers who are brave enough to speak to me off the record, social workers, even politicians. The ringleader of the Rochdale grooming gang, Shabir Ahmed, worked for Oldham Council, Nick. He had a black book. He had access to children. We forced that out of them, and they knew who he was. There are politicians allied, allied to Jim McMahon, Labour Party councillors who sit in the council chamber now, who knew who Shabir Ahmed was, what he was doing, and kept their mouths shut. How do we get you elected? Because you're like me, standing as independent, so you've not got a party machine behind you. I'm presuming you've not got a million pounds in a bank to spend on your campaign. So how, how do we get you elected? I, I think there are, we, there, there is, we've got some traction in Oldham, Nick. For the last five years, I've campaigned and I've led the campaign that has removed three Labour Party leaders. You know, this is a Labour Party stronghold and three successive Labour Party leaders have led their campaign. So I am, I am, I suppose, a political strategist. I know how to win in my hometown. This is my turf. Yeah, this is my backyard. I know how to win here. I know the streets. I know the communities. And it's very, very simple how we win. We galvanise the opposition. The Conservative voters, the traditional Conservative voters cannot need to lend me the vote. They know they cannot win in a town like Oldham with what they got. Those who voted for Brexit last time need to lend me the vote. Those who are 
disillusioned traditional Labour Party voters need to support me. And most of all, most of all, Nick, I need to go into the, the Asian communities and say and convince the people who look like me that this is no reflection on you. You stand against these issues the same as I do, the same as you do, Nick, and the same as everyone else who listens to us. They have racialized this. We need to rise above this and unite. We will win, Nick. We will, Nick, win by all communities working together and voting me and supporting me. And I'm very clear, Nick, I'm not in this for the money. The majority of whatever I earn, I will hand back to back to local charities. This has got nothing to do with money, Nick. This has got everything to do with cleaning up my town and holding to account those who allowed my town's children to be groomed and gang raped. I take my hat off to you. We need more people like you who love their community, love their town and need to do something about it because it's far too easy to moan. It's far too easy to blame the WEF. There's nothing we can do, we're being controlled. It, there's lots of things you can do. There's always something we can do and that is the power of democracy in it. There is always something we can do. That's why you're standing, that's why I'm standing and that's why across the country, people like us are winning, Nick. It's because we've said, We've had enough. We know the mainstream parties will attack us. We don't care. We've got broad enough shoulders. And Nick, we've got a history and a pedigree where our past speaks for itself. Our work speaks for itself. I'm here for the right reasons. You're here for the right reasons. And we will succeed, Nick. We are pioneers and we will succeed. I'm, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. Thank you for coming on the podcast today. But before we go, if people are watching this and going, I'd like to meet them too. Well, why don't you come to the city centre, Manchester City Centre, this Saturday afternoon, one o'clock, um, outside the town hall in St. Peter's Square. Me and you are both giving speeches alongside the event Parents Against Grooming. Come speak to us. And if you can't attend, well, first of all, you should attend that because you'll get to hear some people who, who have suffered at the hands of this incompetence and of this politicising child abuse. So listen to some of the victims about what they've been through. Come talk to us. And if you can't make it, start doing something yourself. Start being more vocal online, but in a sensible way. We don't need nutcases. Be sensible. Start talking about it and, and start standing up and being counted. That's the only thing you can do in a democracy. We have to be the change we want to see in the world, Nick. It's as simple as that. Yep. So come along on Saturday. Lead by example. Yep. Come along on Saturday and meet the pair of us and listen to some good speeches. And then next week, if you watch podcasts, check out the podcast of the Lotus Eaters because me and you are guests on it on Tuesday. And that'll be a good discussion as well. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you for the invite. That's great. See you soon. I'll see you Saturday. Thank you, Nick. Yeah, see you Saturday. Thank you, Nick. <laughs> did you like that video? I think you did. Hit the bell. Give it a big thumbs up, comment, and don't forget, I'm standing for election in Alder, Meath and Saddleworth. So please share this video, speak to your family and friends if you're living in Greater Manchester, and if you live in Alder, Meath and Saddleworth, make sure you vote for me. Catch you soon.